In this video, I'll share the first service of my Cub Cadet RZTS Zero Turn Lawn Mower. I chose this model of Cub Cadet because I basically I wanted a zero turn mower to get around all my fruit trees, but I also enjoy using a steering wheel over the levers. Uh, levers are fine, I just wanted the steering wheel if it was an option, and so that's why I went with this model. Beyond that, you can look up the spec sheet. I'm not a mower review guy, so yeah, I'll put a link down below if you want to read more about it. I did choose a 42 inch deck, just so it was a, a little bit narrower to get in amongst the fruit trees as opposed to the 46 or the 50 inch model. My one came with the 22 horsepower Cola 7000 series motor. For the service, you'll need an oil filter, a funnel, some rags, oil of course, um, and some spanners. I won't read out part numbers of, for example, the oil filter. So if you want that information, look in the description below and I'll, I'll put links to all the parts down there. And of course, you'll also need an oil pan. I just wanted to show you these. These are a, a plastic can, obviously, but you lay them down and they, you can actually use them as an oil pan. You just unscrew the bung and let the oil drip on and it'll drain down through the hole. Then you can do up the bung and, and hold them vertically. So I love these around the garage, uh, particularly where I don't want to make a mess. They're really good. And in terms of your oil, um, in my climate, I use 10W30 for most lawn mowers and small motors, but it is climate specific. So I'll flash up the manual. And if you're in a colder or warmer climate, you might want to use a, a different oil. Something else you'll very likely need is a way to undo the oil filter. More on that later in the video though, because I did hit a snag uh, with this factory installed filter. Start by running your mower for five minutes or so. This is just to warm up the oil so it'll drain freely uh, when you do drain it. This first service is actually due at five hours. I'm slightly over that, but that's fine. I'm also going to do the greasing of all the grease points on this mower at the end of the video. Now that's not actually due to 10 hours, I think, on the service schedule, uh, but I'd rather do it more often than required because that is something it can be easy to forget to do. Set the oil pan underneath the drain pipe. Now on the Cub Cadets they have a basically a drain hose at the back of the mower. Um, there's a square drive bolt installed and it does have thread locker on it so it can be a little bit tricky to undo. I just use shifters but you know any spanner correctly sized will be able to do it. Once it's drained obviously put the bolt back in. You may need to apply a new thread either you can use thread tape or um, thread locking compound to the bolt when you put it back in. Mine still had plenty of gasket material on there so it held fine. Then it was time to take the oil filter off and this is where it all bad. So I don't know what monster tightened this up at the factory, but it was well tight. So I tried by hand, obviously that was a no go. And I sort of expected that with a factory fitted oil filter and um, then got onto the, the strap. So I do have one of those spring tightening versions that I flashed before, um, but I couldn't get that in here. So I had to use the strap style filter remover and I actually ended up crushing the filter because it was just on so tight. In the end, I resorted to the screwdriver through the filter method. So choose your worst screwdriver, don't use your best one. And obviously you need a fairly long screwdriver to go through and provide the leverage. Hammer it through the filter, through both sides, and then you can just use it as a lever to undo the filter. I have heard horror stories where it's broken the filter off and made it even worse, but I've had to do this a few times on cars and whatnot, and it's never failed me as a last resort. Do make sure you put some rags underneath though, because it is messy. So I use the Cola original filter. They're cheap enough, so I don't know. I, I, I would choose Cola if I had to choose one, uh, given that there's negligible price difference. Then I put a little bit of oil around the seal. This helps it seal properly and, and will also help back it off next time so it's not so hard to undo. I also only do these up finger tight. So basically go as tight as I can by hand and then back it off half a turn. This ensures it's tight enough that it seals well, but next time I need to take it off, I can almost do it by hand most of the time.
the the way to fill these motors there's no oil cap on the top of the engine you actually fill through the oil checking hole so wherever you check the level of your oil that's where you actually fill through um so i put the uh the funnel in there and just fill through the top obviously checking every now and then i know how much oil it's meant to take but i i never completely trust that because sometimes you know motors change and the the manual doesn't keep up or whatever it was pretty accurate in this case and then once i think i've got it pretty close i'll actually start the motor let it run for a little bit stop the motor and then recheck it because when the motor runs it fills all the oil galleries with that oil and obviously you use you lose a bit of volume and so then i just top it up and it's good to go it was then on to greasing the machine, which only has to be done every 10 hours of use, but it is a really important job not to forget. Um, so I'm doing it at this five hour mark and I'll, I'll probably do it again in five hours. I'll try and keep ahead of that schedule. Uh, there are four grease points on each side of the machine, so eight in total. Uh, there's one in each of the front wheels, then two just above where the front wheels sit, and two in the center just under the steering column you grease with a number two multi-purpose grease and greasing is fairly straightforward um, you can see on these guards above the wheels the grease points are through those holes you can see obviously the grease point on the wheel is just on the axle and then the two underneath the steering column are really easy to see too there was one tricky one i had with mine uh one of the zerks or you guys call them zerks we call them grease nipples over here in australia but one of the zerks was cross-threaded when it had been put into um screwed into its place and i didn't realize at first and i couldn't get grease in there and i was making quite a mess um and it was because i was trying to go through one of these holes and and grease um onto the grease nipple through the hole so i had to take the cover off and screw it back in properly which luckily i could and that fixed that so i don't know if that's a cub cadet issue or if that's something that's installed at my dealer i just don't know but it wasn't a big deal i figured out what was going on and fixed it up so you can probably tell some of this footage is pretty old um, i sat on this footage for a while it was quite a video to put together and i wasn't sure if people would really get much help out of it uh, you can read all this in the instruction manual but I know sometimes when I'm learning things, I like to see someone else doing it. So hopefully someone out there found this useful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And if you're into doing things for yourself, growing your own food, fixing your own machines, making things, then consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.